we are into incrementality.cassandra.app slash register. So let's insert our email. I'm going to skip this part just to not disclose my email for everyone. So let's skip it. So we registered and we are inside the project. The first thing we need to do is create a new project. So let's create a new project, YouTube tutorial. Oh, this is an e-commerce business. It invests, I don't remember exactly, but this is, let's input 400K yearly investments. The currency is Euro and the country is Italy. Create a project. When we start with, Mar with Cassandra, we're going to be able to have 14 days of free trial and five trainings. So we can iterate on our marketing mix model up to five times, which would be plenty for us. So let's go to data analysis. The first thing that we want to do in any marketing mix modeling project is do a data exploration. Let's click add new. Add once the advanced data analysis, obviously. Um, and let's download and upload the CSV file that we exported from Excel. I drag and drop the data here. All right, we have our data set. It looks like everything is fine. Let's continue with our modeling. The first thing that we need to do is we need to answer a simple form. So let's call it YouTube uh, tutorial. By the way, I'm going to leave the data set that I'm using here, here in the description of this video. So it's easier for you to control it and try it. Uh, use the output variable type. So we need to define what is the name of the date column, the name of the uh, dependent variable or the output column and the type it can either be revenue or it can be orders, conversions, and new customers. Then you want to use select the media columns. In this case, we have display, Facebook, Google, search brand, not brand, influencer, magazine, radio, and TV ads. The cool thing about marketing mix modeling is that we can actually see the interaction that reads between offline and digital uh, investments in advertising. And you, we can actually detect what's the left in sales, the incremental sales generated alts, not only by digital media, but also from magazine, radio, and TV, which is cool. Now, if we had some organic variable like newsletters, we would insert them in here, in this section, or SEO impression, etc. In this case, we don't have it, but it's not necessary. It's not a requirement. Second thing that we want, can have is context columns. Now, this part is really important. The context columns are all the columns in which you can have in an econometric value, a negative coefficient, a negative impact. So you can insert everything in which everything that you don't have, if it has a positive or negative uh, effect on your sales. In this case, we're going to select COVID. We don't know if COVID increases or decreases our revenue. We don't know. Also, we don't know uh, if we had some promotions, right? A 20% average percentage discount or uh, competitor sales or any factors that can have either positive or negative impact on our um, marketing investments. It, it cannot be any media or organic variable that you selected. It's important. Second point, if you have impressions or clicks from your digital media, you should not insert them into organic. You need to have each variable that you insert as an input variable needs to be independent. It does not need to be correlated with any other variable in our data set. This is really important. Second step, after we've selected all the variables, we need to select the time frame in which we want to do the analysis on. Select the country, in this case it's Italy. I want to get the holidays from this, uh, from this analysis and see how the demand changes in the national holidays of, um, of, that, of this country. I want to select season and weekday. Weekday, I selected weekday just because it's a daily data set. If you have a weekly data set, you, sh you cannot select it. Let's create that analysis. Everything looks correct. Done. Let's see the analysis now. All right. I want to navigate into this analysis starting from the bottom and then going up. So we can actually detect all the hypotheses that we need to detect in order to start the modeling right after this step. Let's go in the bottom. In the bottom, the first thing that we see is outliers analysis. What it what Cassandra does, it detects what are the values in each column, in each variable, that have outliers. And outliers is detected when it's three standard deviation away from the median of uh, the values that, you, that it has in that particular column. In this case, display ads has one outlier. In this case, it's only 206, but it's too low. It doesn't seem to be uh, a wrong data. We need to check these outliers because of two reasons. First of all, we need to be in, to ensure that all our data is right. If for any reason, or math issues, or any other reason, our data changes and 
become it and has other values, uh, we should check. We should check it before we start the modeling. Then we check Facebook conversions that has a couple outliers, but they look good. Um, Google Performance Max. Let's see Performance Max. Yeah, the behavior is not really too weird, and I believe every day all the data that they have here makes sense. And CTV for one second. TV, it's fine too. Let's go up. All our data, it's good. There are some outliers, some data points that go above the third standard deviation, but everything looks fine. Second thing that we want to do, as I mentioned before, each variable needs to be independent. You don't want to have multicollinear input variables. And in this exploration analysis, we detect automatically with our the variable, the pairs of input variables that are correlated with each other. And here we have Facebook catalog sales, Google Performance Max, Facebook product catalog sales and Google search brand, and Google Performance Max and radio. So radio is correlated with two Google variables, and Facebook is correlated with two Google variables. Now we need to, this multicollinearity, it's handled in two ways. We either drop one feature or another, or we calibrate, or either we aggregate uh, two channel, two campaign types that are in the same channel, or last resort is to calibrate with multi touch attribution data these features so the model understands exactly what's the impact of Facebook product catalog sales compared to Google Performance Max. And it's a really nice way to handle the multicollinear issues inside of a marketing mix model. Let's go up. That we want to check preemptively what are the features that have the highest correlation with the Apple variables and what, the, what are the features that have the lowest correlation with the Apple variable. Display ads has low correlation of 1.96%. Horrible. While Performance Max, wow, an 81% correlation with the Apple variable. Really, really good. And we can see actually there is, um, there are these variables like radio has a really good correlation while TV ads has a really low. The reason why we have low correlation is either one does the channel does not have incremental impact on your sales or the incremental impact is delayed. We will check and uh, we, we can see actually if this delayed effect, the, this effect is delayed or it doesn't have any incremental impact. But we know that we need to focus on these features and these input variables in order to understand what's happening and how to model. So this variable can either have delayed effects or they don't have any effect. Let's go upper and we can see what's the impact and the change in the amount over time. And it makes sense. There is a pattern that repeats itself every time. So it makes sense to have in Monday a really a lower demand in which in Sunday there is a higher demand for in this case. This is the yearly response in which in January in the first month of the year there is higher demand for our product in which, and in the last part of the year there is lower demand for our product. It makes sense. And now we have the time series decomposition. So in this time series decomposition we see the uh, dependent variable changing compared to the input variable. In this case, we wanted to see the change in COVID. As we can see here, we had COVID in this first part of the year and then it dropped to zero. And it looks like it doesn't have much of an impact. Um, we can actually filter everything, but let's go into this mess, into this combination of other parameters and, sorry, not other parameters, but features that we inserted, media features. So let's select just the Apple variable and then we can explore one by one each variable. We have TV ads, right? Which we wanted to focus on because it had low correlation. Let's click on it. All right, so we want to see, we want to check what's the, if there is a difference between the increase, the spikes in, in the amount of investments that we did on TV compared to the spike of, uh, in, of sales. As we can see here, in the 15th of May, we increase our marketing budget but, and after two days, we generated a spike in sales. The 27th, we got a spike in sales, which means that we can see if this is a pattern, we, we need to uh, compare the spiking investments compared to the spiking sales of these two features. So in this case, we have 19th of August to 20th of August distance. So it's one day from here, 25th of August to the 28th, this is three days. So we, we have between one day to three days delayed effect. We need to consider that and for our modeling phase. Let's do this for the radio. Radio is super correlated with the Apple variable, so it, is instant imp it has instant impact, right? Just in some ways in which there are two or three days delayed effects, but most of the times it's instant impact, so it's good. Let's select display ads. 
display ads has look at this it's here it's pretty clear 22nd of may we have a spike in investments but after two days we see the impact same thing here we go up here 3rd of july we have a spike in investments and after two days we see a spike in sales we want to compare the spikes to see what what could be the delayed effect and in this case it's probably two days delayed effect let's go with influencers influencers too seem to have two days delayed effects one day let's compare it and so on you need to do everything this procedure for each variable so you can understand how to model the next step how to do the following step of uh, creating the ad stock the effect over time for your own brand and see what can be the delayed effect for that particular campaign type said that we selected all our hypotheses and now we can start the modeling phase let's go to the model builder 